I have a loaded question. Go ahead. I'm I'm up for it. Okay. So I feel like myself and the listeners might be wondering now that you have been going through, like you've been saved, you're going through all this deliverance. There's kind of two, I, I don't want to limit, limit it to two routes, but that's what I've seen anyways in other people's testimonies who were gay and now they're saved is they either now go on to have a life with the opposite sex, have a family, or they they never develop that attraction. Um, and instead they go on to a life of chastity and serving the Lord for the rest of their life. Like those are the two options I've seen. So I'm curious like where you are within that. Like if you think you would go on to the family route or if you're here to serve the Lord only or what that sort of looks like for you. Yeah. So um, I actually am currently married um, to a man. <laughs> so praise God. <laughs> praise God. Yeah. I, um, I have a daughter. So, oh my God. so that, that, that says a lot right there. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. But, um, amazing. Yeah. So ooh, this is another thing that I, I don't think is talked about enough and it should be, um, especially when it comes to the LGBT community. Um, I still have a lot of love for the LGBT community because I know the brokenness yeah. and I, I see the, again, I see the need for Jesus. There's so much that I still, I, I'll never be able to look at that community with anger like that. Yeah. Um, and people, they can disagree with me all they want. I don't care. We're called to love people. Does it mean yeah. that I agree with the sin? Absolutely not. I have repented. I no longer live in that sin. Amen. Um, so I say that because I have seen exactly what, what you just said. Like I've seen, um, I've seen believers come from homosexuality and come from being trans to now um, living a life of abstinence, living a life of chastity. And I know that that's not always the case. I know that my situation is not always the case. So going into how it happened for me, which is, it's, it's so, again, it's unorthodox. Um, but before I got with my husband, I was, I was still, you know, I thought I was trans and I was identifying as gay and all these things. Well, all of a sudden this day, and this was back in 2020, it was right at the start of 2020, right before uh, all that stuff happened. I started getting this weird desire and attraction to men. I was like, I know where I was like, where is this coming from? Wow. Where is this coming from? <laughs> well, um, I went about it the wrong way and I hit up my now husband and needless to say, we started hooking up mm -hmm. and during that time I was so confused. Yeah. So confused. I was like, what is this? Like, because I, I started falling in love with him and I'm like, this is so weird. Like I'm identifying as a, as a, as a guy, like I'm. But with him, I couldn't come to call myself by the name that I was going by. And I couldn't, I wanted to wear makeup around him and I wanted to, to wow. be feminine around him. And I was like, this is so strange. What is happening? And so I, there came to a point when we started like actually dating, um, where I remember I was sitting in my car and this was this was like right after the Lord had delivered me from from drugs too. I was sitting in my car and I was just weeping and I was like, God, like, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this anymore. Then I was and I I I heard him speak to me, and he was like, "This is what I have for you. Like, this is the life that I want you to live. I want you to live for me, and I want you to." to let go of the sin, but you've been chasing these things so long, going back to how we were talking about that brokenness. He showed me that he's like, you've been chasing this brokenness, right? Like you've been chasing these relationships with women and you're trying to be something. And 
he spoke to me and he was just like, like, basically he told me like, you don't have to be anything you're not because your identity is in me. <laughs> and you're, you're chasing this identity. That's, it's not you. And it's not me. Like, it's not Jesus. And, yeah. and in that moment, that's when I was really just like, well, then I don't want this. I don't want this. And I remember being like, Lord, I don't know how to stop though. Like, I don't know how to get rid of this. I don't know how to get rid of the, the attraction to, to females. I don't know how to st- stop being trans did you not he told me you don't have to I'm gonna do it and wow I went to sleep I woke up the next day and it was gone I kid you not it was gone I can't explain it I, I can't I'll and to this day I I don't look at women the same it, it was it's just I and I have no desire to want to be somebody else. I have no desire to want to be. And I, I, when I tell people that I know that it sounds kind of crazy, but like, you know, that's going back to how, you know, when it comes to deliverance, God delivers us in so many, so many different ways. Now I said what I said about the LGBT community, because I know that it doesn't always look like that. And my heart goes out because I've seen people, I've seen people in the body that, that have struggled with it. And sometimes I see that I can tell that they're still kind of holding on with pain because I get it. It's hard. Like if you're struggling with sin, but I want them to know that just because somebody else may be delivered from something, like, doesn't mean that that person's not like, we all are going to still struggle with certain temptations. Yes. Like I, I'll be completely transparent. I still struggle with anger. Like that's something that I'm that that I'm still that I need that I'm walking with the Lord. He's showing me, and so it looks differently. So like it's just that that's why. And I think that I I make such a point with with being gay and things like that because it's just so talked about in the body. It's so talked about. It almost seems like homosexuality is like put under this spotlight, and people want to talk about it so much. And they're like, oh, it's sin, and it's sin, and it's like, yeah, but like. Everything else is a sin too. Like yes. lying's a sin. This is a sin. Like we, yes. you know, I I don't I don't think it's right for us to simply always be talking about just homosexuality because it has created this stigma and it has created this barrier between the LGBT community coming to Christ. Amen. It really has, and I get it. I I I get it. Like I have seen from both sides of the coin. I get it, but. At the end of the day, um, we are called to 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 make disciples. We're called to spread the gospel. We're we're not called to sit here and point fingers at people and and condemn people to hell. Like I'm sorry, but that's just not what we're supposed to do. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I'm really passionate about that too and talking about that. Yeah, Jesus loves them too. Oh, so Jesus much. Jesus loved me so when I was dead in my sin. Jesus loved you yes. when you were dead in your sin. Man. Oh my goodness. Well, that leads me to the last question from you. And that would be if you could just say a prayer for those people. Um, maybe like if you were to think about what you once struggled with, uh, the people who most closely resonate with you, like a prayer that you would have needed spoken over your life or to have heard at that point. Um, Yeah. If you would just pray for the listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So heavenly father, we come before your mighty throne today, Lord, and we just thank you so much for your goodness, for your kindness, for your grace, Lord, for your mercy. That is so abundant. And father, I just want to lift up, each and every person that is listening to this. And Lord, I also ask that you would just draw in to listen to this and see this. Any, any, anybody that needs to hear this, Lord, anybody that you're wanting to speak, speak to, Lord, I just lift them all up to you right now, Lord. And I just ask that you would show them, show them your face. I ask that you would reveal your true self to them, Lord. I ask that you would truly show them the love of Jesus Christ. And I ask Holy Spirit that you would just you would move in their lives in a way that is so undeniable mm-hmm. of your love for them. That is so so telling of your mercy for them, Lord. 
that they would know that we are all broken. There is, there is not one person that is more broken than the other Lord. And so I ask that, that they would just see their need for you, Lord Jesus, but they would know that, that you love them so deeply. You would love them so deeply, Lord Jesus. And that they can come to you for whatever, mm -hmm. that they can rely on you, that you are our provider. You are the love. You are love. Mm -hmm. And that you will cleanse them, that they don't have to be broken. They don't have to sit in that brokenness. And I just thank you, Jesus, for being the great physician. I thank you, Jesus, for healing us. I thank you, Lord. And I ask that you would just wash over everybody that listens to this and sees this, Lord, that whoever listens and sees this would just be absolutely touched by your spirit, God. We just thank you so much, Lord. You are so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen.